In January, billionaire investor Mark Cuban launched a low-cost online drug company. The goal is to f up the pharmacy industry. I'm sorry for my language, right? Our business model is very, very simple. Our goal first drives everything is to be the low-cost provider um, for medications to patients. The company sells over 200 generic drugs in partnership with a digital pharmacy. Prescription drug prices remain out of reach for many Americans who pay among the highest prices in the world. So more private market players are stepping in. This leukemia medication goes for about $2,000 at many pharmacies. Cuban's company sells it for as low as $17.10. Patients want the medication they need at the lowest possible price, period, end of story. That's not what these vertically integrated companies are providing. They may say so, but that's not what's happening. Still, the Mark Cuban Cost Plus Drug Company, or Cost Plus, faces challenges in a consolidated drug market. It also remains limited in the medications it can offer. So how is Cuban's company able to offer such steep discounts? Which patients will benefit the most? And could businesses like his actually disrupt the healthcare industry? There's usually not a straight line between the list price a drug maker charges and the price patients pay at the pharmacy counter. The drug supply chain can be complicated, containing multiple parties who all negotiate to purchase, sell, and provide rebates for drugs. Cuban's business model works in large part by circumventing this drug pricing model. America, unlike other rich countries, doesn't really give the government a role in negotiating prices on behalf of its citizens. It is a much more fragmented market. So you have all of these individual players trying to negotiate prices on behalf of, of their employers and no real sort of insight into how much the other guy is paying. One way Cost Plus is able to lower the price of prescription medication is by removing insurance plans and healthcare industry middlemen, known as pharmacy benefit managers, or PBMs. Nearly 80% of US prescriptions are managed by three PBMs. PBMs manage prescription drug benefits on behalf of health insurers and large employers. They use their purchasing power to negotiate rebates and discounts from drug manufacturers, but they don't always pass along the savings to consumers. And so what they'll do is they'll go to, say, a Pfizer and say, you charge X amount of dollars for this drug, but we would like to get a 15% rebate in, that you'll pay us back off of the drug as a discount and which we will then pass along to our clients. One of the criticisms that they've received is that PBMs also tend to keep a percentage of the rebates that they negotiate for manufacturers. The higher the drug prices go, the larger the rebates that, that they'll receive um, and that they'll negotiate, and hence the, the more money that they'll get to keep at the end of the day. The Pharmaceutical Care Management Association represents pharmacy benefit managers. In a statement, its spokesperson said, PBMs pass the vast amount of rebates negotiated from drug manufacturers along to employers, health plans, and other sponsoring health insurance. To get around these inflated drug costs, Cost Plus cuts out third-party PBMs by making it a cash-only pharmacy, meaning no health insurance plans are allowed. But for some drugs, like the leukemia pill we showed you earlier, it can be cheaper to pay out of pocket at Cuban's pharmacy than going through an insurance plan. Insurance companies want you to work within their world. So their, their logic is, look, if you want access to all of our customers, you're going to have to play the game, which is what other companies that have tried to do the same thing we're doing have faced. And so we're just saying, nope, you know, we're not going to play that game. So how exactly are cost plus drugs priced? The company sets its rates by negotiating directly with the drug manufacturer and then adding a 15% markup, a $3 fee for pharmacy labor, and a $5 shipping cost. The goal is to be very transparent, and that's exactly what we do. And that transparency, we think, is our most effective marketing. Some Cost Plus medications are more than 10 times cheaper than those sold elsewhere. Because Cost Plus doesn't accept insurance, uninsured or underinsured individuals may benefit the most from the low-cost options. For people who don't have insurance, oftentimes they get charged the highest prices because they don't have anybody negotiating on their behalf like insurance companies do and like PBMs do. Still, there are limitations to the Cost Plus business model. Right now, they're really targeting people who don't have insurance for generic drugs, and that's a relatively small part of the overall market. Also, generic drugs typically aren't the biggest cost problems for people. It's really brand name drugs that um, don't have any competition. At the same time, Cost Plus faces challenges in adding new medications to its website. 
you have to do the deals with all the manufacturers. And there are manufacturers who are afraid to work with us because they're afraid they'll lose those big pharmacy benefit managers who are doing a lot of business with them. So we have to overcome that hurdle. To expand its offerings, Cost Plus is launching its own pharmacy benefit manager. Once operational, its PBM could allow the company to offer more low price medications and eventually provide their services to those with health insurance plans. We're not going to distort retail or wholesale prices. We're not going to ask for rebates. You know, to be a pharmacy benefit manager, you have to carry enough drugs. And right now, we don't have enough drugs to be a full service pharmacy benefit manager. We hope by the end of the year to be past 1,000. The company is also planning to become an all-in-one pharmaceutical supplier, combining manufacturing, wholesale distribution, and pharmacy services all under one roof. Right now, Cost Plus is building a facility in Dallas, Texas to manufacture certain drugs. Meanwhile, the Biden administration's social spending and climate bill, currently stalled in Congress, includes several provisions meant to rein in drug makers' pricing power. The Build Back Better plan included a number of provisions around drug prices, probably the most significant of which included things like allowing Medicare to negotiate prices for certain medicines. And that would have been a real watershed because that hasn't um, ever existed before. And as of now, we haven't seen a big push to try to get those drug pricing provisions passed. While there is still no long-term solution to the problem of high drug costs in the U.S., Cuban's business could offer consumers more choices in a fragmented market. I think it's too soon to say, or really to know, whether or not the Cuban pharmacy is having an impact. A big thing will be whether they can expand into brand name drugs, which they can't manufacture or buy through multi-source manufacturers. I think the question is, is whether they can keep going for the long haul and you know, gain more market share. And as they do that, that will give them more opportunity to disrupt the market.